Rates are beginning to shift upwards, and since this is one of many rate changes expected to come over the next couple years, Canadians are already starting to ask themselves the important question, what does this mean for housing prices? To answer that, I wanted to take a bit of a different approach than you might otherwise expect. Rather than take the typical quantitative approach to this, I wanted to take more of a qualitative approach when answering this question. That way you could see not only how I got to and derived my conclusions, which I'll share in this video, but you'll have more information with within which to draw your own conclusions as well. And of course, thanks to some of my current subscribers for letting me know what kind of videos you'd like to see. Please continue to do that. Now, to get a better understanding of how Bank of Canada rate increases might affect housing prices, we first need to focus on the two economic concepts of supply and demand. And truthfully, I think this is where some people start to make their first mistakes on trying to predict what will happen with these coming changes. For instance, supply, as we know, is the number of houses available in Canada. And demand is typically thought of as the number of people looking to buy homes. But I actually think there's a better definition of demand that we could be using. It's subtle, but for now, let's use this definition and later on in the video, I'll update it when it's relevant. When demand and supply are roughly equal, the market is said to be balanced. And currently there are only about 15% of Canadian markets that are balanced. The other 85% of the Canadian markets are known as seller's markets, meaning that there are more people willing to buy than there are willing to sell. Demand, as it is in this case, is greater than supply, and that drives up home prices. So what effect does the increase in the Bank of Canada interest rate have on housing prices? Well, to begin with, an increase in interest rates means a rise in the actual mortgage payment that you're going to pay on your home. And as the monthly cost to own a home increases, that may remove some people from the home buying equation. The faster and more severe the rate changes, the more people that may either postpone or permanently delay their home purchase. Not only that, if you raise the rate too fast, you may end up in a situation where current home owners begin to struggle to afford their mortgages, causing them to sell their homes to get out of their debt obligation. That would result in some very interesting times in the housing market. So then it would be safe to conclude that the housing prices are going to drop then, right? After all, the Bank of Canada, like you might have seen in some of my other previous videos, has no choice but to raise rates to handle the inflation problem, especially since the last inflation report shows that inflation is the highest it's been since 1991. Rates are surely to rise and housing prices are surely to drop then. Well, not exactly. The Canadian housing market is a complex beast and does not operate in a vacuum. Mortgage rates are just one of a great many factors that have an influence on both the demand and supply side of the equation. Take for instance land use and public policy. If municipal, provincial and federal governments could get their shit together, they'd be able to remove a lot of the red tape to home building so that homes could be built and enter the market. But even if governments did this today, which is unlikely since governments move slow, it would still take the private sector somewhere in the neighborhood of five to seven years to respond to the current pent up demand. That unfortunately means that the supply side of this equation is relatively stable and won't be able to change to match demand for at least quite some time. What has a lot more of an immediate effect on the housing market, however, is immigration. In the last five years, Canada has accounted for a whopping 1.8 million new people, with 80% of those new people being immigrants. Canada's natural increase, that's the amount of Canadian births minus deaths, only accounts for one in five of the new people here in Canada. The rest is all immigration. Unsurprisingly, some of these people want to buy a home and grow some roots in Canada. So yeah, rising rates will remove buyers from the equation, but immigration comes along and adds a whole bunch more. Now on top of that, if you recall from some of my previous videos, interest rates would actually have to rise quite a bit before they start having an impact on what these home buyers qualify for. Yes, increases in the interest rate do mean an increase in the actual payment that you're making, but Canadians have not been qualifying at the actual mortgage payment for quite some time. They've been qualifying for their mortgage at the much higher qualification rate. At least for now, changes in the Bank of Canada rate aren't having an impact on the amount that you qualify for. If you qualified for a $750,000 mortgage prior to the Bank of Canada interest rate change, then after the interest rate change, you still qualify for a $750,000 mortgage. Your purchasing power hasn't actually changed yet. And that's why there are still some people on the other side of this argument that are saying in 2022, you can still expect housing prices to skyrocket. I mean, even if you look at the most recent inventory levels in some markets in Canada, we hit inventory levels as low as 1.6 months worth of inventory. To put that in perspective, that's the lowest it has ever been in all of Canadian history. 
there are simply just not enough homes given the demand. So then does that mean that these other people are right then and housing prices are actually gonna skyrocket in 2022? Well, not exactly either. Because if you understand how inventory is calculated, it actually points to a totally different phenomenon that I think is happening here in Canada. Inventory is actually quite simple. In its oversimplified form, inventory is nothing but supply relative to existing demand. So in this case, like I mentioned earlier, supply hasn't really kept pace with demand as it's grown, which is why this inventory number has been shrinking for a while. The real question is why? After two years of this pandemic and historically low interest rates, was this past January, the moment where we hit the lowest inventory levels that we've ever seen in a given month. And I think here is where a bit of psychology and market sentiment are a bit at play. Now that there is this general consensus by Canadians that interest rates are going up, nobody wants to be left out. So you have these last minute home buyers trying to get into the market before the interest rates are gone forever. I mean, after all, don't you wanna be in on the market before interest rates go up? And even though this is only one of what will likely be many rate increases to come, I'm sure we're gonna to continue to see the psychology play out in 2022, as more home buyers try to enter the market before we see some kind of significant increase in the interest rate. But once again, this is far from the only factors at play here. With increases in the Bank of Canada interest rate come some expected but likely unwanted side effects. The whole point of raising rates is to reduce Canadian consumers' spending. That's how interest rate increases battle inflation. It works because as rates go up, people can't or won't spend as much money on goods and services. The natural side effect of that though is that when consumers start spending less money on goods and services, then businesses start making less money. And when businesses start making less money, that doesn't bode so well for job growth and wage growth. With fewer raises and fewer jobs, you start to have less qualified buyers. And in a market where it's increasingly tougher to buy a home on a single income, more jobs is kind of important. So with all that being said, what does this rising rate environment going to mean for housing prices? To recap, on the supply side, we've got the land use and public policies that are constricting supply. And with no quick fixes on this side of the equation, as far as most people are concerned, this is pretty much locked in. On the demand side, we've got home buyers rushing in to buy before rates get higher. And we've got an incredible amount of immigration putting additional pressures on home prices. But we've also seen rising prices on gas and groceries, and now with increasing mortgage payments, Canadians are gonna have to start readjusting their spending patterns. This means buying less house and possibly less goods and services, which of course has an effect on employment. So here is where I think it's important to pause the conversation and go back and correct our definition of demand. Up until now, we've been considering demand as the number of home buyers that are looking to actively buy a home. And while that's accurate, I think a much more accurate definition would be the amount of money that these home buyers have when pursuing a home. It's a subtle difference, but I think an important one. Because even if the number of home buyers didn't change, but suddenly all of them had more money to spend, you'd still see housing prices rise. And buyers, thanks to the money printing and government spending over the last few years, have more money to spend, particularly in some markets more than others. It's still wildly unknown how all of this extra money roaming around in the economy is going to affect things like employment. After all, some Canadians may choose not to alter their purchases or readjust their spending habits with the rise of interest rates because they have additional capital at their disposal, compared to historical situations where they may have otherwise reduced their spending. Then, in addition to all of that, we of course have the uncertainty of Russia invading Ukraine and all the possible implications that that might have on the Canadian economy as well. I think what's most likely if you take all of these variables into consideration is that home prices are likely still gonna rise throughout 2022, albeit probably much slower than they've been rising over the last few years. And so far, I'd say most signs point to things stabilizing, not crashing in the years after. As the massive demand that we've seen falls, thanks in part to rate increases, that should bring demand more in line with supply. One of the things that I would be watching for, though, is a possible price correction in a lot of the rural markets across Canada. They have the highest chance of a price correction as Canadians may begin to migrate back to city centers when the pandemic restrictions start lifting.